What is it like to be a woman in the world of business today? How do you handle it all? Our second show about strong women is next. Stay with us. Programming is supported by NIPSCO. Today's young minds are constantly reimagining what our world will be like tomorrow. That's why NIPSCO is upgrading its infrastructure now, so we're ready for whatever comes next. More information at nipsco.com slash future. Welcome again to Lakeshore Focus, a weekly show highlighting the key issues, important events, and interesting people in our region. I'm Keith Kirkpatrick. Our emphasis this month is on women in roles of leadership. Today we focus on the world of business. What is it like for a woman who aspires to success and balances her many other roles? Let's find out by beginning our conversation with Teresa Mudd, who is a Vice President with First Merchants Bank, and Deb Pressel, who is owner of Pressel CPA. Welcome, ladies. Glad to have you on the show. Thanks for having us. So the, everybody's probably going, why did you pick these two? And I guess I have to admit, I picked you two because I think that you guys are doing incredible things in the community. So, and are really, I see, is pretty successful in your careers with what you're doing. So, is it tough being in business today as a woman? I think it's being in business today as a woman is a huge opportunity. I think women have more opportunities in business. Um, being in business for yourself gives you uh, flexibility that you need uh, to be your own boss, uh, and you can uh, you can provide for your family at the same time. I agree, and I think that a lot of corporate organizations are realizing the same thing, and allowing for that flexibility in careers as well. So while it is still challenging, you know, sometimes to get that leg up, um, I think that there's more opportunity than there ever has been. Flexibility is important for a woman. Is, really, is it important for just a woman or for everybody today in the workforce? I think flexibility is important for a woman and it depends upon um, your relationship with your husband or if you are, um, you know, a, a single mom. Um, but flexibility is pretty important because if you do have kids, flexibility is important when you have a house that you're managing also um, and kids exactly. that you're managing. I think that's the most important time period when you need that flexibility. And there's a different time in everyone's life and as, the, as your family changes and as you change through different phases, that flexibility changes. When they're babies, there's you know, the sickness of the babies that are sick type of flexibility that you need versus when you have grade school age kids there's the after school activities type of flexibility that you need in business and like I said um, I think the flexibility for as a woman um, is the same for as a man and usually a couple needs to work that out together and I see that happening so much now in both a man's career and a woman's career. So, so that flexibility is important, and you both are talking about, you're talking about kids. You both have kids, right? So you're both managing that at the same time you have these careers, right? And it's obvious you have a career, Teresa. Uh, you have a kid, right? Because you're probably wearing something that one of your kids gave you, yes? Yes, my son made this bracelet for me at camp yesterday, and I was getting ready to leave the house today, and he said, Mommy, you can't leave without my bracelet. So he made me put it on and he said, I'm sorry it's all boy colors, but I hope you like it. So I wore it today because he really wanted me to wear it. You know, I took a big risk because <laughs> Teresa could have made that herself. And right. I, and right. I would have said, oh, your kid made that. No, no, I made this myself. Oh, that would have been really embarrassing. But uh, so how old are your kids? Um, my daughter's six and okay. my son is three. And yours? Uh, three teenage daughters and a 10 year old. Holy cow. So you guys <laughs> got your hands full uh, you definitely have more in your hands. And not only are you guys raising families and, and having kids, you guys are both really involved in the community and doing a lot of stuff too. Teresa, you're in like all kinds of stuff, right? I am, yes. Tell I, me a couple of things that you're engaged in. I am on the board for the Urban League. Um, I'm involved with Habitat as well. I'm on the committee for the Professional Women's Conference for Lakeshore Public Media. Oh, I didn't even know that, so I want to make sure that that's a disclosure here. So. <laughs> <laughs> um, I am, and that, that's a lot of fun. Um, I also am starting to coach my daughter's soccer team um, as an assistant coach this year. And, 
And that's just what you're doing now, because I know you've done a ton of stuff in the past with all kinds of other organizations. You just kind of move to the next ones, right? Yes. And, and Deb, you're involved with a bunch of stuff too, right? I, I do a bunch of stuff, yes. A couple of things that you're involved with? So um, a lot of things that I'm involved with is related to the school. Um, I'm in volunteering at the school and also our church um, is where I spend a lot of time. I do um, work with the Valparaiso uh, Women's Association, um, and I've done several speaking engagements where people have asked for um, me to speak on personal finance. I just want everybody to understand, you guys have full-time jobs that are not just full-time jobs, but they're like really responsible jobs at a fairly high level, being an owner of a company and vice president of a bank. You've got families, and you've got all these other activities you're involved in. How do you do this? Uh, how, that's, everybody's got to be out there going, how do, they, how do they pull that off? If I were to say it was easy, um, I'd be lying. It's, it's definitely a balancing act. And as I join other things, or as the kids get involved in other organizations, it is really trying to figure out what makes the most sense, where do you spend the time, um, how do you get dinner that night, right? Are you going to make it or are you going to have to go out? Um, and it's, it, it really is just, it's a juggling act. And I always want to be, number one for me is to be the best mom that I can be. So um, making sure that that's my priority as well as... Is it more important than your job? Um, I think family is the most important thing. And I work to provide for my family, but also have um, the sense of, of self-success and self-motivation. So... Um, they're, they're both very important, but, you know, they always say, do you want your, your gravestone to say she was a great worker or loving, giving mother, um, or both? And I think being passionate about the community, showing the kids that it's important to volunteer and give to others and do that thing, or do things like that, um, is extremely important. So it all kind of goes together in being a good mom, being a businesswoman and being able to help the community as well. So, so your tombstone is probably going to say the caring, loving mother first, awesome employee, and then she did all this stuff in the community, right? Right. <laughs> so it's all there. How do you balance this out, Deb? You know, I think I always take a look at um, what's going to be most important to me during the day. Um, you know, you juggle a lot of hats, and sometimes it's, um, you know, what's important to me that day. You know, what do I have to get done that day? Um, and I think I love that I work because it really makes my kids independent also. Um, and they have to realize that um, my time is valuable um, so that they can do, they could do more things on their own than to, you know, throughout the day. And I really think it's developed my kids um, into better human beings, better teenagers, responsible teenagers that can really solve some problems for themselves too. Um, it's, you know, it's really interesting, you, you reminded me, uh, when I was a kid, my, my, my dad was hurt and went back to college, and my mom uh, bought a business and was running this business, and she was like, I, I'm so sorry I did that while your kids were little. I'm like, oh my gosh, you made us so independent. You mm -hmm. know, we had to learn to do everything, plus we worked in the business all the time. We were yeah. slave labor, I think, or cheap labor, or something like that. <laughs> yep. So, so why did you both decide to go into business? I mean, you chose that field as opposed to teaching, or nonprofits, or healthcare. Anything else? Why did you pick business? I've always been a very motivated individual, and um, I always look for opportunities. And what, um, where can I be the most successful, or where can I make the biggest impact? And um, honestly, if you would have asked me 15 years ago where I would be today, it wouldn't be as a vice president of a bank. Um, but I'm so happy I took the path that I did because I've learned so much where'd along you, the way. Where did you think you'd be? Um, I thought I was going to be a criminal attorney. When I was a junior and senior in high school, I had all intentions of going to law school. Um, I was accepted into law school after a couple of years of college and just decided that that's not the route that I wanted to take. So um, I ended up changing my major and going into um, human resources and business management, and I haven't looked back since. Um, it, it's been a a great ride for me. I've learned, again, I've learned so much. I've met so many key people. Um, and I know the opportunities are endless. You know, it doesn't, being in business doesn't really restrict you to one field. Um, but when you find that field that you're passionate about and that supports you and your growth and development, it's nice to be able to grow as an individual, not just as a woman, but you know, you're a part of that organization and a part of that internal growth plan. And 
um, there's so many opportunity, so many opportunities there. So for those of us who use the banks, we're, we're glad that that those two don't correlate banking and criminal activity. So, right, you know, right. Oh, me too, believe me. We're just really <laughs> hoping it stays that way for sure. Why did you pick to go into the business direction? Yeah, um, I think um, I've always enjoyed working with people. Um, and I really enjoy, um, I enjoy math um, as far as accounting goes and understanding the business, the economic side of things. Um, and that d drove me, and I, it's such a good fit for what I do um, and for the lifestyle that we're living. You know, maybe a better question for you, being mm -hmm. a CPA, being mm -hmm. a public accountant, is why did you decide to start your own business as sure. opposed to, again, as a mom, sure. wouldn't it be a little easier if you just, like, work for somebody? Right, and right. Yeah, um, so I did work for somebody for the first seven years of my career right out of school. Um, I worked for a fairly large firm and um, worked a lot of hours, got a great base for learning the knowledge that um, I needed. And I went out on my own um, because there was I was working 75 to 80 hours a week um, at times, traveling a lot, and that wasn't conducive to starting a family. Um, and when I did start my family, um, at first I thought I was gonna retire altogether. Um, but I had enough people that my business started small and has grown with my kids into a, a decent-sized business now, which is a full-time business for me. And just the flexibility that that has allowed me um, over the years. I've been in business for myself for 16 years now. So what's the downside of being in business today as a woman, particularly as it comes to dealing with men sure. and or even other women? Because I know sure. women can be just sometimes yeah. just about as challenging, right? So what, what's what's the downside or the tough side of that today? Um, I think there are definitely times um, when dealing with other men, um, men and women in business, um, uh, probably the hardest thing um, in dealing with other men um, and women I'm not, honestly, I'm not really sure. Um, I haven't had, you know, that is not the struggle that I have. Okay. Um, I, that is not the struggle that I have in business. I would so you say, never feel like they don't take you serious because you're a woman? No, I don't have that struggle at all. Um, mm. I have never had anyone disrespect me. It's really interesting because older women will talk about that quite yeah. a bit. I mean, do you, do you experience that? I have. Okay. Not so much anymore, um, but... In my earlier days in management, um, I experienced it both through employees that were sometimes a little bit older than me, um, maybe had a little bit more experience in the field, but not necessarily management experience. You know, I had some pushback there. Um, and then even still to this day in the banking world, there's um, a little bit of a, a stigma or a... Um, stereotype associated with okay. the good bankers or the successful bankers. So more so when I was managing an office, um, people would come in and mostly older men. Want to know where the manager's at? Yes. Do you really know what you're talking about? How can you possibly know? Um, Has that ch do you think that's changed? So do you hear some of the people you supervise, the women who are running or managing some of the branches, do you hear them say they still face that? They do. It just doesn't happen as often anymore. Mm -hmm. as it used to. And I don't know if people have just accepted the transition um, at this point because they're good, right? These managers are good. They know what they're doing. And so once you actually sit down and have a conversation with them and give them a chance, I think that people realize, okay, maybe they do know what they're talking about. Yeah. And I think that's the same with me. When people are calling me with questions and stuff, I mean, they, they have to have developed a trust with me um, and they're looking for me for answers. And I, I have not had anyone question you know, um, my education and... Do, do you hear that from other people, particularly this concept, everybody wants to talk about the glass ceiling, you know, and I, I'm beginning to wonder, is the glass ceiling, is the, is the glass getting thinner and thinner? Is it cracked? I mean, do you still hear that people are trying to move up and they can't go further because the guys are running the jobs? You're shaking your head yes, so... Um, I just, in, in my experience, and again, this is outside my business because I work with a lot of women in business. Um, you know, I do see that, um, to me, women get paid less than men do. Um, yeah, you see all those I, I those see records. that. Okay. I see that commonly um, throughout the region here. I mean, I think that's a common problem throughout the country. 
um, that women will be paid less than men for a similar type job. Um, women that tend to be in business for themselves tend to just charge less than men do for the same type of work. So I see it on both sides. Not only are they compensated less, um, but women that they tend to not value themselves as much when they are putting themselves up for you know, business th too. This is interesting. If you think about this, women are still paid less, and you hear this all the time, mm -hmm. but women are making a lot of these decisions now about hiring people. Right. So are the women still perpetual? part of the problem too, but they're perpetuating the system, do you think? You I were think, going to do the HR thing, so. Right, I think in some cases it's, it's adapting, right? So this has already been, it's already been set, the, the value's already been placed there. I mean, obviously it's not in the HR manual, women get paid this, men get paid this, but if you go on historical pay, and that's typically how, place, how places are going to hire and pay, and the woman was paid less than the man, then they're going to come in being paid less. And so I think it's just a, a cycle that, that needs to be broken. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. I'm so glad you brought that up because that is a reality, and it's a reality across the country. It's not just here in Northwest Indiana. So do you think those opportunities are getting better? Because that, that was your call word at the beginning, opportunity, opportunity, opportunity. Are there better opportunities now? I mean, are they even going to get better for women in business? I do. Personally, I see it just increasing and getting better you know it's um it's definitely not where it it's not to the potential that it could be if you look around at executives and ceos there are there are some women but it's definitely overpowered by um, and i don't have the statistic but by the by male mm -hmm. right so mm -hmm. um really thinking about where we're going and where how far we've come i think gives you hope that the future is only going to get better so i can only hope that my six-year-old daughter is going to have even more opportunity than i do today um, because she looks up to me, she looks at the things that I do, she looks at other women in the business world and knows that she wants to become something successful, which it, I couldn't be more proud of something like that you know, for my six-year-old, so I so think it's great. Is this reality or is this just kind of your hopefulness because I know you, you're always the glass is three quarters full, maybe if not almost to the top, so uh, you think all the other women experience that too? Like, oh, there's really this opportunity, everything's getting better? So. Uh, from what I see, um, I see women that um, are starting their own businesses, that have these great ideas of things that they are going to do on their own. Um, I love helping a woman start their own business, and they're passionate about it, and it's all them, and they're all in. And they, they're successful. I see women being successful at that. So I think that opportunity for this next generation to go out there and find something that they get some experience and something that they really love to do, and then just go all in to, be, to building their own businesses, I see a lot of women going that route. I, I tend to agree with both of you. I think that that's, there is more opportunity, and I, and I think it's that hope that will drive part of that too for, for women. You talked about how important it was to role model for your daughter, and how important is that for you to role model for not only your kids, but for just other girls, young girls, for yeah. them to see you? And wh what do you do to make that happen? That is so important. So I do a lot of financial literacy, a lot of community outreach, that type of thing. So I like to, and in, in any community, that one-on-one -on -one time or that attention from somebody other than your teacher or your parents or your family goes a long way. So anybody that I can mentor or um, share some knowledge with that wants to sit down and have a one-on-one -on -one conversation, I'm always open to that because I want them to know there is hope. You know, there, there are going to be, like you said, you know, there's going to be forces that say you can't do it, you can't do it, you can't do it. Um, but to know that you always can. And one of my mottos has always been focus on what you can do, not what you can't. And that's at, in any aspect of life. That's whether you can help a customer do something, um, focus on the positive. Whether you can be the captain of the cheerleading team or the captain of the soccer team or whatever it is, you can do it if you put your mind to it. And so that kind of rhymed. I like that. It's a slogan. Yeah. Where'd you pick that up? <laughs> so I know you have at least one daughter. How many daughters do you have? I have four daughters. All, wow, so you so are. Four girls that I am, yes, 
you know, trying to prepare for careers someday and looking at career, we do, we talk about careers and possibilities and um, financial management often at our house being an accountant and um, they, they always kind of, um, you know, chuckle about that, but it is That'd definitely- It'd be tough if you were a CPA and, you, and your daughters grow up to be kind of financially illiterate, right? Right, exactly, challenging. exactly. If, if one won't listen to you, you could send them over to Teresa though. <laughs> there you go. Right? <laughs> we can work together. They, they, <laughs> tend to, they tend to listen, yeah, but um, it, is, it is something that you do think about as you're you know raising daughters what is that going to look like for them um, and again I look at it is what is it going to look like for them as they are raising their own families um, because I think that is the challenge what career can they be in and do a good job at raising a family we don't have a lot of time left but I do want to ask this question just do, do you see some women who just are in business and kind of say I can't deal with this I just really would rather work in the nonprofit world or teach or do something else because I think it's going to be easier or different? Do you see that? Or is that kind of gone away? I don't see a lot of that anymore, to be mm -hmm. honest with you. I think anybody who's trying to figure out what their career is going to be will go through that. Um, I think you've even seen the other side of it, where a teacher has said, this isn't for me. You I know, I'd rather, be, <laughs> I'd rather be in the business world. Right. So I think any career that you're in, male or female, you know, it leaves for that, that room for uncertainty or um, where where am I going to make the best use of my time and to what organization can I be the most valuable? Okay, we only got a couple minutes left so I, I really don't want to depart from this conversation without each of you kind of having that opportunity to say here's my advice to young women today, mm -hmm. you know, to even to other, all women today. Mm -hmm. what's, what's your advice to other women today? I think find your passion, um, find your passion and follow that dream no matter if it looks like you're not going to make a lot of money at it, don't necessarily just go to where there's money because if you're passionate about something, you will figure out how to make money doing that. Good advice. Teresa? They always say you'll never work another day in your life if you love what you're doing. So to piggyback off of what Deb said, I think that um, finding what you love, right? So finding something that you can see yourself doing the rest of your life. and. You're going to come, you're, there are going to be things that come up that are obstacles for you. Don't take that as a knockdown. Look at it as an opportunity to move forward. And as long as you keep your eye on what you want to do, you can really do or be anything that you want to be. Well, you guys obviously role model really well the, what you are preaching because you are good examples of people who are passionate about what you do and you love what you do. So. Uh, I really appreciate you both being on the show and sharing these thoughts, and I hope some of our younger audience, some of the women out there will listen to this and go, that was really good <laughs> advice, because it was. Thank you both for being on the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you very much. You bet. Years ago, there was an advertising campaign which used the slogan, you've come a long way, baby. It depicted a sophisticated looking woman holding a cigarette. The implication was that women have made so much progress in equality, they were now able to do what men could, like smoke cigarettes. In today's world of health consciousness, such a concept seems ridiculous. At the time period this marketing initiative was launched, it didn't seem crazy. Women were struggling to gain ground in any way they could. They were trying to break away from the barefoot and pregnant, the little woman in the kitchen, stay home and take care of the kids. Or at best, you could be a good secretary, your opinion doesn't count, and even just look good and shut up. Being able to smoke in public like a man seemed as if progress was being made. Fast forward a couple of decades, and we had another advertising initiative with a message for empowering women. Do you remember this one? I can bring home the bacon, fry it up in a pan, and never forget let you forget you're a man. Progress, right? Now girls, you can have a job just like the boys. Oh wait, you still have to cook, and you do remember it's still your responsibility to please your guy. Even though it sounded as if women were gaining ground, the real message was you need to be superwoman. If you want equality, you have to do more than is expected from men. I think women heard the message and accepted the challenge. They not only moved into the world of work, they started moving up the ladder, managing operations, starting businesses, and running the companies. In addition, they kept up their homes, cooked and raised kids. 
To take it a step farther, they began to coach sports teams, join organizations normally populated by men, be appointed to boards of directors, and organize for social change. It was not easy. There was pushback, harassment, lawsuits, and bloody battles. Progress has been made, and women are in a much better place than years ago. Are there still challenges? Yes. But now we can truly say, you've come a long way, baby. Maybe we need to rethink that baby part, though. As always, I want to hear from you. We welcome your comments and thoughts about the content of this program. I particularly would like to know what more you might have wanted to hear from our guest today. You can email us at focus at lakeshorepublicmedia.org or reach us on our website. If you have an idea for a topic or a specific guest for Lakeshore Focus, send that suggestion to me. We are always looking for interesting content. Join us next week for another Lakeshore Focus. Until then, I'm Keith Kirkpatrick saying, make a positive difference in our world today. Is supported by NIPSCO. Today's young minds are constantly reimagining what our world will be like tomorrow. That's why NIPSCO is upgrading its infrastructure now, so we're ready for whatever comes next. More information at nipsco.com/future.